Hi, my name is Todd Stanley, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Todd Talk, where we take teaching theory and turn it into teaching practice. So I'm coming to you from Melbourne, Australia, where I'm at the Thinking and Learning Conference that's sponsored by Hawker and Brownlow Publishers. Uh, and so but the background that you're seeing is not my typical office, but it's actually my hotel room. So what we're gonna talk about today is the idea of gifted pullout or a resource room. This is another way that you can group gifted kids. Um, and it is a method that um, can be really beneficial if you do it the right way. So typically the way a gifted pullout works is you identify a certain population of gifted students in, this partic in a particular area. So let's say for the sake of argument, you identify that you have uh, nine uh, English language arts students who are gifted in English language arts in the fourth grade. And so what you do is you take those nine and you pull them out of the classroom for a part of the day and, and go, they go down to a, a gifted pullout room or resource room and then they work with a gifted specialist to challenge them to be challenged, to learn at a higher level, to be with kids who are like them and the kids that are able to be challenged. Because what can be um, frustrating for kids is, so let's say this take those, those nine gifted kids and they are in fourth grade reading at a seventh grade level, but they are sitting in a classroom with kids who are reading at a second grade level. And so the teacher is just gonna have difficulty challenging each of those students because there's just such a wide gap. They'll, they will do their best and they will try, but the problem is that it is very difficult to, to try to, to bridge such a large gap. By, by pulling kids out of the, the, the classroom and putting them in the resource room, the gifted specialist who has been hopefully trained uh, to work with gifted students can really challenge those kids and can, it can then have them doing things that are at an eighth grade level to challenge them to read even more. So that's just a, a simple example of what a pullout room works, how it works. So there are different uh, reasons for doing a pullout. So one may be that you have, um, a, you know, don't have a large enough gifted population to pull for a whole program, uh, but you have students that are gifted in certain areas. So for instance, in the district that I'm in, we have a math pullout program called Math Plus. And the way this works is in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, kids, when they go to the math class, are going to this Math Plus class, which is actually accelerating their learning. So what I mean by that is, in the fourth grade, they are getting the fourth grade and part of the fifth grade material. In the fifth grade, they're getting part of the fifth and all of the sixth. And in sixth grade, they're getting all of seventh and eighth grade compacted. And the reason for this is that they have shown themselves uh, very adept at moving at a quicker pace and uh, understanding math concepts a lot quicker. And so we're, we're moving at their pace. Now you imagine you take those kids and you, you put them in a regular ed classroom and they are moving at a year long pace like everyone else. And, but, but they're capable of so much more. And so, uh, so that we're not really reaching their potential. We're not really challenging them to be at the level that they're at by putting them in the regular classroom. So you would do the pullout so that you could focus on those students and, and focus the curriculum and the pacing of that curriculum uh, in that way. It doesn't always have to be acceleration. Uh, you might take kids from who are, are really good at science. So let's say you have you know 12 kids who are gifted in science in the seventh grade. You pull them and you have like a, a special science class where students are going to be thinking a little bit deeper. Um, they're going to be analyzing scientific concepts a little bit more. They're going to be putting into play, rather than learning, just learning the basics of science, which many of the kids will be doing in the regular classroom, they are going more in depth and they're being challenged of what they're capable of being challenged. And so that the, they be pulled, put into a classroom. It doesn't necessarily have to be a, a gifted specialist either. So if you pull those gifted students and put them in with someone who's really good at science or even a mentor, or someone who comes from outside, like an engineer or something that would come in and work with students, that would be really beneficial. Ideally, you do want to have um, some, so that they can get gifted services, you want someone who has been trained in gifted education or has been you know, given high quality professional development with working with gifted kids. But that's just another example. So it doesn't have to be acceleration, it just be going more in depth within the, the material that you have for the year. But the idea is that Students have 
um, they're able to go where they're able to go. There's nothing that's holding them back. Um, because in, in a typical classroom, what might happen is, um, you know, the, the, if they're able to move at a very quick pace, there are other students that are, that are actually lagging behind. And then the teacher has to try to balance that by trying to keep in the middle and trying to, um, you know, make sure that everyone is, is at a certain spot. And so that means that she has to pull back the kid who is going ahead and slow them down. And that can be very frustrating for a student. So um, there, there, and there are many ways you can set up your pullout. So you can do a subject area, you could do it, you could identify a group of cognitive kids. So if you identify like seven cognitive kids um, and you wanna pull them to do, uh, you know, in-depth research or uh, creative problem solving or design challenges. But the idea is that you're not pulling them and putting them in the exact same class. So putting them, I mean, it is a benefit to put them with like-minded students, but the idea is not that you are putting them with, you know, just in a class and doing the exact same curriculum. The curriculum or the content or the, the pace or whatever needs to look different. It needs to be set up so that it can challenge students. And your, your school district is gonna set what that challenge looks like. And like, like the examples I gave before, that may, that may be going quicker, that may be going deeper, that might be going um, you know, in all sorts of directions. And so you know, your school will have to make that decision, but uh, there is no one right way to do a gifted pullout. Um, one way that I, I did gifted pullout, it was kind of a combination gifted pullout magnet program. So what happened was uh, we identified kids who are cognitively gifted from around the district. And one day a week, they would get bussed over to one central school where they were in a resource room with me. And so what I did in this situation was rather than, again, teach them the content standards that they were already learning in their classroom, we took those content standards a little bit further. And we actually went above grade level with some content standards because the students were able to handle that. And as a result, one day a week, these kids were coming and they were getting enrichment and they were getting challenged uh, more so than they would have been if they were just in the typical classroom. Um, and there was always some pushback. You know, there were teachers who were like, when you pull them from the regular classroom, they're missing their work. But the problem is that they're missing the point that these students can miss that work and they'll be OK because they move at such a quick pace that they're going to catch right back up. And, and even they, they may even be so far ahead that they don't have to catch up because they're just too far ahead of the class already. And so we do need to um, you, you do need to have a relationship, though, with the, the, the regular ed classroom and the gifted pullout. In other words, they shouldn't be autonomous of one another when it comes to planning or when it comes to can kind of formulate how you're going to reach kids. So as a gifted pullout teacher, you would want to have we would have conversations with these regular ed teachers to see what they're doing so that you can, you can, uh, you know, enrich there. So I would often talk to my, uh, when I was doing gifted pullout for fourth grade, I would um, talk to the, the, the teachers and say, what are you guys doing right now? And then I would take it a step further. So if they were learning about, you know, fractions and I would, then we would talk about, you know, multiplying multiple fractions or, you know, how to convert fractions and things of that nature. So I wanted to complement what the teachers were doing um, and I didn't want to step on any toes and that I didn't want to teach them something that that teacher is going to be teaching two, you know, two months down the road. And then the kid already knows it and the kid is incredibly bored. So it, it is a fine line trying to figure out um, how to balance uh, the gifted resource room, gifted pullout with the, the typical classroom. Uh, but it is important that you communicate with one another and that you have a, you know, a good idea in place. So. The example I gave you before, the Math Plus program, it, it, is a, it is a common curriculum. So we have this at seven of our buildings. We have seven elementary schools. And so each of those buildings is doing a similar curriculum. But, you know, the, then the teacher is teaching to their particular style. You know, they have individual students in there that maybe have different needs and different uh, abilities. And so they're, they're adjusting to that. But for the most part, across the district, um, all the, the gifted pullout classrooms are following the same pacing guide and working at the, the same material. Um, it, it may be different times they're working at this material, and some may go more in depth than others, depending on the interest of the students. But it does give you a framework to make sure that students are you know, getting a consistent um, education in that regard. So why should you do a gifted pullout? Um, there, there are various reasons. First off, it's a great way to put like-minded kids together. 
Um, so again, just like the, the magnet program, when you do a pull out, you're pulling kids out and putting them with other kids who are like them. And so they can have conversations with those kids. They can bounce ideas off of one another. Um, you know, they, they just are going to have someone that they are, that is similar to them, which is really important. Uh, the, the second thing about gifted pull out is it allows you to meet their needs. So in school, the whole purpose of, of us as teachers is to meet the kid needs of our students. And sometimes when students have very specialized needs, that can be very challenging to do that in a regular classroom. So by putting them in this pullout classroom, you can then uh, train someone to work with gifted kids who is going to be able to meet their specific needs because they're able to move at a quicker pace or they're able to go more in depth or they're able to look at things in a more complex manner than you would in your typical classroom. A uh, third reason to do gifted pullout is because a lot of people would think that by pulling the gifted kids out of the classroom, it's actually a brain drain and that's going to hurt the classroom or hurt the, uh, the teacher in the regular ed classroom. But in actuality, it is a benefit for them as well because what happens is if you pull, let's say you pull the nine kids and so that she has typically has a class of 25 and now, she, now she's at 16 kids. She can really focus on the needs of those 16 kids because she has a smaller classroom. She can maybe give attention to students that she normally wouldn't be able to in such a crowded classroom. Um, and so and another, another benefit of doing this is it allows kids who maybe don't get the chance to be the leaders or to be the ones that are answering the questions or to be the ones who are, uh, you know, uh, it, it allows them to step up because there's not those other kids there that are taking the spotlight from them. And so they're able to, again, rise up to the occasion. Um, and, and then when the gifted pull-out kids come back, then it goes back to the way that, that you would normally run your classroom. And so, uh, but you know, how you, how you set your gifted pull-out program is gonna be very specific to your um, school district. Uh, as always with anything, one size does not fit all. So it's really important that you find what is going to be best for your district. But most importantly, you need to find what is best for kids. So if you look at your gifted data and you discover that you have uh, an inordinate amount of kids who are gifted in, in social studies, um, more so than any other subject area, then that's what your gifted pullout needs to be focusing on. Or it needs to be, you know, uh, where that you're giving attention to that in the gifted in the gifted resource room, whether you're giving a lot of attention because your data shows you that you have a lot of kids who are gifted in that area, and so and so what that means is your gifted pullout program may change from year to year depending upon the needs of your students and what the data shows you and what the population shows you. Uh, the district I'm in currently. When I first came in, they were focused solely on math. And what I discovered is that we actually had more reading kids who are gifted. And so we started doing um, pullouts for, for reading as well. So, all right.